Okay, let's take a look at question 14, topic set 6. This question um, asks us to compare the value of delta H to delta E for each of the reactions given here. So in order for us to be able to do that, you have to remember the definition of delta H. And so remember that what delta H is, is just heat that's measured under constant pressure, which we give the symbol Q sub P. Okay, so let's see how delta E and Q are related. Well, delta E is equal to Q plus W, right? So if our Q is measured under constant pressure, then this just becomes Q sub P plus W or delta H plus W, okay? Now remember that the W we have, the work we have in chemistry is something we call expansion work, which looks like this, minus P external times delta V. So we can then rearrange the equation so that delta H is delta E plus P external times delta V. Now a slight uh, reminder that since this is this expansion, the expansion will be due to having either more gas or if you're having compression, then it's because you're having fewer gas particles. So it's the number of gas particles that determine whether you're going to have expansion or compression in your container containing your chemical reaction. So this is PV, we can write it as NRT, but since it's the number of particles that determines how much expansion I'm going to have or compression, then I can write it as delta NRT. So in other words, I can and write this as delta H equals to delta E plus delta N times RT. Now remember what delta N represents. Delta N is the difference in the number of gas on product minus gas on reactant. Now before we can take a look at the actual question, we want to derive some general ideas first. So the equation looks like this, right? We're going to use delta H equals to delta E plus delta N RT. Now there's three different scenarios that we can have. If delta N is positive, if this number is positive, that means the um, you're going to add to your delta E some positive number, which means you're going to have a number that's bigger uh, for your delta H. So your delta H is going to be bigger than your delta E. If your delta N is negative, you're going to subtract something from your delta E to give you your delta H. So that means your delta H is going to be less than your delta E. And of course, the third scenario is if delta N is equal to zero, then your delta H is just equal to your delta E. So let's take look at our reactions. The first reaction is 2HF gas goes to H2 gas and F2 gas. So the quick way is to just look at our delta N in this case. So our delta N for that first case is going to be zero, right? Because you have one plus one on the product side minus two. So that's zero. So if that's zero, that means your delta H is equal to your delta E. Let's take a look at case number two or B. Here we have our delta N being equal to two for the ammonia minus one plus three, which gives us a total of negative 2. So if our delta N is negative, that means our delta H is less than our delta E. The last scenario is delta N is 4 plus 6 minus 4 plus 5. That gives us 1 positive number. So that means that the delta H must be greater than delta E in this case.